Hi there. I won't be speaking English a whole lot during ASL 102 since it's your second sign language class, American Sign Language class. Um, but I will speak English a little bit right here at the beginning of the course. Okay, so I'm going to go over the questions and answers on the questions ca question cards in the pre-unit and give you some explanation about how those things are signed. Okay, so first of all, notice that I'm standing in front of a solid colored background that contrasts with my skin, and I'm wearing a solid colored shirt that contrasts with my skin. I'm well lit, uh, hair is off my face, which is easy for me because it's short hair, but anyway, you can see my face easily. Um, I'm, I'm looking level with the camera because I have my, my computer actually with the camera set up right in front of me. Um, so I'm not, you know, looking up at you or looking down at you. There's no camera shake or bounce because my computer is on a desk, so there's not going to be any movement. And um, I'm evenly lit. I don't have any harsh shadows behind me. Um, I have good lighting on me. So anyway, that's just an important reminder about making videos that are conducive to watching signed language. Okay, now, number one, ask the person who she or he lives with and what their household duties are. So first of all, I'm going to use the second person pronoun you. I'm pointing you. Live with who? Their, or sort of actually like your, all of your, your duties or chores. But remember, it's like work, but with a D, so you can remember duties. What? Remember that in ASL, the who, what, where, when, why, those WH word questions come at the end of the sentence. So, um, again, you see me doing that at the end of both of those sentences. Now, my answer is, Okay, so there I said, I live with my, this is the first person possessive adjective, my husband, his duty. Now I'm using my eyebrows up. It's um, a kind of topicalization. The topic is his duties, and then I'm going to comment on that. I'm going to tell you what they are. So. And notice I'm using the third person possessive adjective, and I'm setting him up here to my left. Notice that I said food cook, or food cooking. I didn't say cooking food. In ASL, you put, you often put the noun before the verb. You usually do. So anyway. So again, I'm using dishes, dishes, hand wash, trash, throw out, or take out. And again, you notice I'm raising my eyebrows to show you my duties. Okay, now, number two. Now you can say, 
yes, and first you shake, you nod your head yes, and then you sign yes. I exercise or work out every day. Or you can say no. I, in fact, kind of prefer that you say no because I want to see how you talk about frequency of time. So I prefer that you say This is five times a week. You might say three times or thrice a week. You might say um, every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday. Uh, you might sign four times a week. You can sign any of those things. Number three, ask what the person did last Saturday. Now here we want to establish the time element first. And again, I'm topicalizing, I'm raising my eyebrows. Last Saturday? Now, what did you do is a WH word question. And we're going to use this sign, sometimes called do, do, <laughs> do, 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 for what did you do? And remember, this sign includes the concept of what, so you don't have to say do what. Just. And then I can start off. Last Saturday, I saw a movie with a friend. Okay, uh, number four, ask when the person does laundry. You, clothing, launder, when? WH word question furrowed eyebrows. This is every Saturday. Think of like the calendar and you have Saturday, 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 and sometimes Saturday if it's five Saturdays in a month, every Saturday. Every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday. Number five, explain you have one brother and one sister and you are the baby of the family. Then ask, the per ask if the person has brothers and sisters. Okay, so. This is half brother, half brother, or you can sign half, like one over two, half brother. Notice that I said I used contrastive structure. I have one brother, one sister. I am last, the third one. I'm holding up one, two, three, three fingers with my non-dominant hand, and I'm using my dominant hand to point to the finger that shows my ranking of siblings. So I'm last, I'm this one. Number six, uh, ask the person whom she or he is closest to. So, you are close, very close. Who? Uh, well, I just said I'm close to my husband, but it kind of can relate to the brothers and sisters question, like which brother and sister are you closest to? So I could say, now I, can, I didn't say that my sister was younger than my brother, but here I'm pointing this is my sister, she's the second one, the second born. Number seven, ask the person if they want children in the future. So now we have a time element that we want to establish first. In the future,
in the future you want children, you? Notice that that you is often repeated at the end. It's at the beginning and at the end of the question. No, I don't want the sign, don't want children. Or you could say, Yes, I want two boys, two girls. Again, notice I'm using that contrastive structure. Number eight, ask the person how old she or he is. Remember this sign when you're looking at a person and you're furrowing your eyebrows can mean how old. It's a WH word question, who, what, where, when, why, how. So it's just, you, how old? Remember, age numbers come from the chin. It, it basically comes from because the sign old comes from the chin. So age numbers come from the chin. One year old, two year old, three year old, 53 years old, that's me, 53. 21, 19, 23, okay? Number nine. Tell the person you need to see the teacher. Ask where his or her office is located. So we have two things here. We have a statement, and then we have a question, and you need to have a little pause between. Teacher, I need to see. Third person possessive adjective. His, her, their. I spell office. And I sign where at the end of the question. Leaning forward, eyebrows furrow. Now you get to show some directions or give some directions. Different building, go up third floor, hallway, all the way down, last on your left, there it is. And this mouth means right there. Number 10, ask the person what kind of residence she or he lives in. Don't worry about the word residence. What you're asking is, well, in signing naturally anyway, you were taught to say, do you live in a house or apartment, which? You could ask different ways, but anyway, um, this is how you would sign it. I'm using contrastive structure, starting on my non-dominant side as usual. I forgot to point that out. You live house, and then I spell A-P-T for apartment, and I return to the middle, I lean forward, I furrow my brows, and I sign which. Now, you might live in something other than a house or apartment, and that's fine. Then you answer, I live in a condo. Or you could say, I live in a house. But remember, just because they signed it on their left doesn't mean that you sign house on your left. For you, it's just a plain answer. You're just signing right here in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. Number 11. Ask, if, ask the person if she or he has a pet. Pet, spelling it, you have? It's a yes or no question. Either you do have one or you don't. So my eyebrows are raised. I just said, yes, I have two dogs. But you could say,
two dogs, one cat, if you want to. Again, using that contrastive structure from your non-dominant side to your dominant side. Or, if you have several pets, you can place them in an arc in front of you like this. You don't do that at the end. I'm just showing you that I used the space in front of me. Okay, um, number 12. Ask the person, what is the sum of 23 plus 23? 23 plus 3. How much or how many? And then your answer. Twenty-six. Number thirteen. Ask if the person learned Spanish in high school. Now again, we have a time element which we will establish first. In the past, past high school. High school is what's called a loan sign or a lexicalized sign. It's coming from the H and S of high school, and if you were just to sign the letters, it would be HS. But high school, starting over here on my non dominant side and gliding or pulling to my dominant side with the S oriented toward, with the palm toward me instead of out, high school. So past high school, you learn or study, you were in the process of learning Spanish, you. This is learn like to learn once, to learn a lesson or to learn of something. But when you're learning, if you were in the process of learning Spanish for a year or two, it's learning. <clears throat> so again, And it's a yes or no question, so my eyebrows are raised. Yes, past high school, I learning Spanish two years. Number 14, name member of a category, ask what the category is. It should actually say members of a category, because what you do is something like this. I'm, I'm giving you random examples of letters. A, C, E, G, this circle, what? In other words, what are all these? And then the answer would be letters, letters. Number 15, the last one. Point to an item or name an object, ask what color it is. So I could say, I'll just say that cup. That over there, cup. Color, what color? I'm leaning forward, I'm furrowing my brows, and I'm signing color, which means what color, okay? And then the answer I could say, that cup, I'm topicalizing, I'm commenting, red. That cup is red. Okay, thank you for your patience in watching this, and I hope it helps.